It makes you feel so empty. Unfortunately, I'm about to experience that myself. I'm on the last book of this series, and that sucks. But there's also something satisfying about letting a story conclude. I don't know if I'd want it to go on forever. Maybe. But there are some things that I wish I could. On the other hand, have you ever read something that overstayed its welcome? Yeah, definitely. I can think of at least one thing that I've read that got pretty unbearable like halfway through. And the ending really sucked. So it sucks when something good has to end. But it also sucks when it just keep inventing more plot until you don't like it anymore. I guess it sucks either way. Um, well, that's the nature of all things. They come to an end. The two fall silent. They solely eat while making making their way through their respective reading material. Except Natsuki doesn't seem to be touching her food at all. You don't go out during the weekends, right? Excuse me? Like, with friends at the mall or downtown or whatever? I'm not a total shut-in, you know? Oh, my bad for making assumptions. Well, I'm sure I go out less often than other people, like you and the others in the club. I don't really meet with friends and, and arbitrarily spend time like that. I'm usually meeting with my board game group. Board game group? It doesn't matter. It's just more nerdy stuff. Why do you ask anyway? I was just curious. I just realized that I couldn't picture it, so I was just curious. Yuri looks at Natsuki and realizes that she's shaking. Don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki pulls her knees into her chest and puts her head down. I can't take this. D did I do something? Yuri gets flustered, her mind racing over what she may have said or done. I did. I ended it. I texted them earlier telling them, and then I just blocked them because I'm so afraid of their responses. And now it feels like I'm dying inside. Oh, that's... I'm sorry. Totally unsure of what to do, Yuri can barely find any words to support to offer. Meanwhile, the sound of Natsuki's unusual hard breathing fills the air. Then she speaks again, barely above a whisper. Help me. I feel sick and I want to hit my head against things. Please, I can't take this. You may be having a panic attack. With the realization, Yuri's demeanor suddenly changes. I, I have experience with this, so I'll help you through it, okay? Natsuki meekly nods through her rapid breathing, head still buried in her knees. Yuri slides herself over to Natsuki and sits on the step behind her. Then she puts her hands on Natsuki's shoulders. Can you feel my hands? Natsuki nods. Her shaking becomes much more apparent through Yuri's sense of touch. Yuri keeps her voice low and gentle. You're safe right now. You're in a good and safe place where nothing can hurt you. Natsuki nods once more. Although Yuri is the only one touching Natsuki's shoulders, she can practically feel her racing pulse through the base of her neck. We'll do breathing exercises together. All you have to do is listen to my breaths and breathe along with me. Let's breathe now. I'm sorry, but this is hitting way too close to home for me. This has happened to me a few times back in secondary where people I knew were, had panic attacks, man. So I, I like, I can actually picture this. It's, it's very, very, like, you feel really awful for the person who's going through the panic attack. Like, man. Yuri takes a deep and slow breath. Beneath her hands, she feels Natsuki's shoulders rise as Natsuki takes a breath of her own, trying to mimic Yuri. They exhale together, although Natsuki's breath shakes on the way out. That's good. Let's keep going. Yuri breathes in once more, and Natsuki joins her. They continue like that for a few more cycles while Yuri closely monitors. Eventually, Yuri feels Natsuki rest more of her weight into Yuri's palms. Let's focus on the physical world. All you have to do is focus on the feeling of your breaths going in and out, and the weight of my hands on your shoulders. You're in a safe and comfortable physical space. Minutes pass in silence. By now the worst of it has passed, and but Yuri is determined not to move away until Natsuki prompts her to. Meanwhile, Natsuki has lifted her head off her knees and her breathing has mostly steadied. Then she takes a final deep breath and slowly pulls herself to her feet, causing Yuri to let go. She stretches her arms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak out. I don't know what my deal is. You don't have to apologize. This must be enormously stressful for you. Is that going to keep happening? It may, or it may not. We can take measures to help prevent it in the future, but I think it'll naturally get better over time. Natsuki motions to sit back down again, so Yuri moves over. Yuri turns away to pick up her book from the dusty floor, which she had hastily set down earlier. She brushes the dust off the cover. I don't think I could have gotten through that alone. You're not alone. Feeling shy again, Yuri speaks into her own lap. From now on, you don't have to do anything alone. As she says that, Yuri tenses up. It's rare for her to so openly share her thoughts. 
But something about Natsuki, of all people, makes it feel so much more natural to do so. Perhaps because, like Yuri, Natsuki is so timid and uncertain of herself. Natsuki does such a good job at hiding it that it's taken a long time for Yuri to finally realise it. And because of that, Yuri is able to deliver the reassurance that she herself would have wanted. Demonstrating that you deserve the love of others. If you can accept that for the first time, then perhaps you can begin the tremendous journey of learning to love yourself. Ah. Do you really mean that? You're probably going to regret saying that if you do. How so? Because I'm probably going to have a lot of free time during the weekends from now on. So you're giving me permission to be as annoying as I want to drag you around to a lot of places? I see. But you already said it, so you can't take it back now. Hmm. Well, I suppose I have no other choice but accept that responsibility then. Hmm. I know a good ice cream place. Oh? That means you'll finally figure out my favourite ice cream flavour. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't remember? The first day that you came to the club, you guessed everyone's favourite ice cream flavour, but for me, you said you had no idea. Seriously? I don't remember that at all. Oh, wait, yes I do. I said it was probably green tea. Yuri shakes her head. It's a good guess, but my favourite is usually to get a chocolate and raspberry together. Chocolate and raspberry? How fancy. How is that fancy? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I should have guessed something like that. Well, maybe next time I'll try chocolate and strawberry. Hey, strawberry is my favourite. <laughs> what a coincidence. I think it helps to have something to look forward to. I still have the sick feeling in my stomach, but it's easier now to convince myself that I did the right thing. Is there anything better I could be doing? Not that I know of. There's nothing that will make this easy for me. And you already did more than enough than anyone. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, we never talked about the letter you wrote, but I feel like we're way past that at this point. I don't even know what to talk about. Except that I think it helped me to understand my feelings a little better. The way I like to be treated, and the kind of friends I want to have. That's why I wanted to start coming here in the first place. Even though I was so scared of causing more problems. I thought it was a coincidence that you ran into me here initially. Oh, uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean? Nothing. I, I may have tracked you down first, with the help of Sayori. That's... but you said... I was shy, okay? I wasn't ready to, like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Well, I guess I'm glad that you worked up the courage, even if it was in your own way. I can tell that you've been making a lot of difficult decisions. It's brave, and it will make things better in the long run. I think anyone would be proud of you for it. Anyone? You mean, like, you? Yes. Like me. You know, I could get used to this. As long as... As long as you don't tease me too much. Fine. Just a little then. That's fine. I know how uncertain everything feels to you right now, but I really do think that good things are in store. Those are my honest feelings. Thanks. It feels nice to be reassured. The two girls continue their conversation through the remainder of lunch. But a new feeling hangs in the air, a feeling of greater certainty in their path forward. In just a few hours, there will be another literature club meeting where the four club members will happily spend time together. Each of them, all with their own special qualities, have something unique that they can deliver to one another. Through friendship and literature, the club members will continue to grow and find new happiness together. The end of each chapter is the start of the next. Yuri thinks to herself. Since she's about to finish her long-running series, it would be best to have a new book lined up. Perhaps this week would be a good time to visit the bookstore together. <laughs> ah, man! So wholesome! Uh, let me read the mail first. Staying focused on our goals. As a reminder to help guide our data collection and any analysis performed should be focused on answering some of these main questions. How does granting elevated access to the VM affect a person's emotional state? How does granting elevated access to the VM affect a person's value and goals? How does someone effectively navigate an experiment with their ability to change the contents of their VM? How is elevated access being weaponized? What actions and values most contribute to the destruction of the universe? What? What are you talking about? Most importantly, how might your observation apply to your own universe? To our own- Oh, so to the in-game universe and then to our own universe. Bonus. How we can present this to the upper management as the operation that benefits the company? Unrelated note. Whoever changed the color scheme of the desktop to pink, can you please change it back? It's unprofessional and it runs the risk of drawing eyes. Okay, hold on. Oh, sorry there, boss. Can't see it. She's nice and wholesome. Look at this, bro. 
Right, so... Oh, yeah, there it is, the last one. And it's one big bar. Yeah. Right, anyway, that's all for the self-love part of uh, Doki Doki Plus. If you guys like the video, obviously like it. Comment if you want. Uh, subscribe if you want and hit the bell if you do so desire. I think I'll be finishing the series off with equals, but I don't think I'll call it finale. I think I'll just call it, like, um, well, next episode number in case I need to come back to this game for any more bits and bobs. But for now, look forward to the potential last episode. Thank you.